Hello, my name is Damian Ballman. I'm one of the residents here at Mayo, and we're going to talk about iron toxicity today. So let's start with a case. Um, a five-year-old male was brought into your emergency department by his mother after ingesting iron ta tablets on a late Saturday morning. Apparently, the patient's mom had been taking some iron pills for some mild anemia. The um, young boy had been actually pretty inquisitive about the pills after reading iron on the label and having a keen interest in comic books. So the patient was watching some cartoons that morning, unsupervised by his mother, as she was sleeping in as it was her day off. And around noon, um, the patient's mom noticed that her iron bottle uh, was out of place in the counter bathroom and the lid was obviously off. She approached the patient who um, was um, complaining of some stomach pain at that time and admitted to taking some tablets, about 20 of them. So, um, so past medical history, patient's otherwise healthy, um, no real medical issues, lives at home alone with his mother. So on physical exam, um, you find the patient to have um, somewhat normal vitals for his age. He's normal tensive, borderline tachycardic. Um, overall looks a little ill. He's um, been vomiting um, and having some loose stools. Uh, he's holding his stomach and um, his mom notes that he's just acting a little bit off, a little bit um, sicker uh, than even what it appears she says. Um, otherwise, he's tender throughout his abdomen. So as you're examining him, the patient vomits some, some bright red blood, and uh, the nurse looks kind of at you nervously asking, what are you going to do next? And of course, you'll call your local poison control center and, and um, look up some information, but it's always nice to have some background and, and knowledge of what, what the diagnosis and what, what the next steps will be um, for this patient. And so let's talk about iron. Um, iron is not a benign supplement. Uh, there's in fact a high incidence of overdose on iron tablets, um, including about 25,000 uh, tablets um, reported in 2004 by the uh, poison control centers. And while most of them are not toxic, um, they can be, and there's um, a good number of deaths reported in the literature as well. So a uh, person typically contains about uh, eats about 15 to 40 milligrams of elemental iron per day, and of that, about 10% is absorbed. Ferric iron, or Fe3+, plus is the majority of what's eaten, but really it has to be Fe2, or ferrous form, before it's absorbed, and that's reduced by the gastric acid, and then absorption occurs in the duodenum and the proximal jejunum. So toxicity is secondary to radical form, um, free radical formation, and on the cellular level, this leads to um, poisoning of the mitochondria as well as uncoupling of oxidative phosphorylation. Typically this is prevented by transport proteins which are overwhelmed in toxicity. So iron comes in three different forms. It comes in gluconate, sulfate, and fumarate. And it's important to know what type of form the um, patient has ingested is in addition to uh, the amount and time of ingestion because it really uh, changes the outcome and prognosis of the patient and you can determine how much elemental iron is ingested by taking the uh, amount of iron ingested times the percentage of elemental iron divided by the patient's weight. So our patient took about 60 mg per kg of elemental iron. And again, it matters how much because that can um, tell you, give you an insight into the patient's prognosis. Less than 20 mg per kg of elemental iron is usually fairly benign, but greater than that warrants further investigation. So um, in this patient, you know, we, we um, will have to think about kind of the stages of what's going to happen. And there's five classic stages of iron poisoning. Um, it's not really important to know the hours as much as it is to know the stages. And the initial stage is secondary to GI toxicity directly from the iron and includes GI symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, hematemesis, hematochesia. There's a latent phase where the patient looks better, but the third phase is when the patient um, can really deteriorate and can go into a shock-like state from um, hemorrhaging and, and has trouble protecting their airway. And then stage four is where liver issues can arise. And stage five is more as a result of the stage one um, of bowel problems, such as pyloric scarring and, and small bowel um, obstruction. Typically, this is seen a few weeks afterwards. So um, what are we gonna do in the, in the care of this patient? And uh, first off with diagnostic evaluation, we're gonna take a look at labs. Um, CBC may show a bit of a leukocytosis. Electrolyte panel may show a metabolic acidosis and the patient may be slightly hypoglycemic. You need to type and cross-match them. 
uh, because uh, they may have hemorrhage um, from their GI system. And you can get a serum iron, um, which will help with um, prognosis. And serum iron greater than 500 uh, mics per um, deciliter is very concerning. Role of imaging, here's a list of metals that or uh, tablets that will cause um, radio opaque images um, on abdominal x-ray. Iron is one of those and may be helpful in determining the amount that's been dissolved in the GI tract. Let's talk a little bit about treatment. Of course, you need to be concerned about ABCs, especially in that stage three of the iron toxicity. Um, but you also need to worry about decreasing the iron absorption. You can do that by gastric emptying. There's really no role for activated charcoal, but you can do some um, lavage. And there is, probably is a role for whole bowel irrigation. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So whole bowel irrigation um, is generally a, a questionable technique for toxicity. But in iron overdose, it's, it's been shown to be effective, especially if you can see undissolved iron tablets on x-ray. So you would do this by administering about 500 mils per hour of um, go lightly in children, about two liters per hour in adults. Um, and this can help reduce the amount of absorption. And in some cases, you may even turn to um, a gastrotomy or an endoscopy. So to be clear, there's no rule for hemo hemodialysis or hemoperfusion in iron overdose. So what can we use? We can use deferoxamine, which is a chelating agent, which um, helps the iron be excreted from the urine. Here are some indications. Basically, it's whether you're sick or whether you ingested more than 60 mg per kg of elemental iron. And then also the iron levels can be helpful in this. So defuroxamine, how do we know how much to give and when to stop it? Well, you give 15 mg per kg to a max of 6 grams per day. When you have iron toxicity, your urine turns orange. This can be helpful is when your urine stops turning orange and turns more of a pale color or yellow. That can be more indicative that you have no more free iron in your urine. So uh, the caveat to that is if your patient remains ill, you need to keep using the defroxamine. So how did our patient do? Well, he kind of deteriorated in front of us. He started vomiting blood. Um, so you bolus him, you, you type him, type and screen him, and you secure his airway. Labs uh, demonstrate a metabolic acidosis and x-ray confirms many non-dissolved iron tablets. So you start to go lightly, you start the defuroxamine. He gets admitted to the ICU, but later discharged. So in conclusion, iron is not a benign supplement. Um, and it also comes in three preparations, which is important to know so you can calculate the elemental iron um, that is present uh, for the ingestion. And then if it's less than 20, you're probably okay, and the patient likely won't manifest any symptoms. Greater than 20, you need to work up. And then treatment, as we discussed, ABCs, whole bowel irrigation, and um, defuroxamine.